you guys are most definitely not ready for today's video. Because the anime I am going to be talking about today cannot be enjoyed by everyone, sadly. Rather, it is specifically for the group of anime watchers who are not brought up in any discussions and are most of the time regarded as trash. And today I am going to give them a chance of redemption. That is by actually watching mainstream anime. But not just any anime. I'm going to tell you about the top 10 best anime with violence and X. And by X, <laughs> you know what I mean. So without further delay, let's dig in. So starting off our list, we got Doreku the Animation, a device that can turn people into slaves. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. No need to call 911. It's all fictional, it's fake, it's fiction, it's fantasy. So chill out for a moment. So back on track. This is a story where the main character gets turned into a slave and causes all the crap within the show. And you want to guess why he becomes a slave? Well, he was curious. Yep. This one is stereotypical anime that tries too hard to be dark and edgy, but then fails on all fronts. The plot, characters, and almost everything is pretty much awful. There's no way around it. It's, it's awful. So the show relies on stripping girls and the shock factor to make up for the poorly written plot. But even all that said, this anime as a whole does present itself a certain level of uniqueness that we don't often see a lot except in a hentai anime. Yes, it heavily focuses on the X elements and uh, well, another way to put it than violating women. But even after that, the show is quite enjoyable for the most parts. Eh. Then next up at number 9 we have Freezing. This title alone is frustrating to me because where I am living it is hot as hell! But anyways, coming back to the topic, this anime is based on the future where aliens have invaded Earth. But guess who is entrusted to save the planet? The Avengers? No. Power Rangers? No. A bunch of teenage girls wearing questionable clothes obviously, I mean, <laughs> what else would it be? Frankly, if I were to live in the world, I'd have killed myself before I had to see any of this crap. Now, don't quickly jump to a conclusion just yet. While this may sound like a military action genre to you, the story in actuality takes place in a freaking academy where the supergirls are being trained. So to be fair, if I had to categorize this anime, I would regard it as etchy, school life, romance with a fair bit of action. But nothing dramatic, nor is it deep in plot, although it is deep in plot. And for those wondering about the X elements, yeah, it, it does have it. Not as much as number 10 though, but the fan service scenes, oh boy. <laughs> You're not ready for the quantity this show provides you. So if you like any of that, probably want to give this one a try. Then next up at number 8 we have Kokoku. So here the main character is useless and broke as hell. Well, I guess we finally found a character more useless than Sakura. Look at that! And on top of that, his family members get kidnapped. So to save them, the main character and other characters enter a different realm where time stops for everyone except the user. But somehow, the bad guys get there as well. And what happens after that? Not gonna tell you. Go watch it yourself. Now, the family we see being kidnapped feels like a real Japanese family. So if you prefer funny, unpredictable, and absurd characters rather than realistic human beings, then Kokoku is not for you. And well, there are some fan service and X element scenes, but there are very few. So don't hope for too much. And keeping that aside, the show is quite enjoyable to watch. So how about you guys give it a try? Then coming up at number seven, we have ourselves a mouthful of a title. It is Reen, Daughters of Memozine. I'm pretty sure I said that right. So this anime is about a girl who cannot die. Sounds pretty interesting, right? It is one of the strongest points of the series, as the interesting portrayal of immortal beings and the evolution of society and technology throughout the multiple decade time skips between each episode is quite fascinating. I mean, the series first episode starts in 1990, while the last episode takes place in 2055. Well, with a story like this, this show could have potentially became a very epic and hyped anime but instead it chose to be horny. As the show carries on, the fan service dedicated scenes become more evident. But since fan service has become a staple in recent anime, it is pointless to dislike a series based heavily on the amount of harshness of those. And considering these horrific and X element scenes, kids shouldn't be allowed anywhere near this show at all. 
Oh God, protect the children. And not to mention the themes behind them. If I had to guess, it, I'm sure it's only suitable for mature viewers. But those who do watch will be treated to a dark series that holds some very interesting references and concepts, both apparent from its visuals or integrated into its plot. So check it out if you want to, just beware. Then next up at number six is Speed Grapher. This is a story of a photographer nerd who unlocks superpowers. Yeah, it's not our best work, boss. That was probably the worst story recap on the channel so far. But that's what it is. Deal with it. Now, a lot of people might not like it saying that the show is not as action-packed as your favorite anime out there. And that is right. This isn't that type of anime where the main character and the bad guy both get power-ups and keep on fighting for ages. Rather, this is an anime that's good, dark, and gritty, but is also character-driven and therefore will dedicate a few episodes to building and defining the character's personalities. Then I bet you will like the show. So if you want to watch a show that's gritty and dark, but has low character development and more shootings and bigger explosions, then watch Black Lagoon. Not this one. Oh, and I almost forgot, expect some near X scenes and a whole bunch of fan service. They are quite brief with the curvy parts shown in flashes, but you will like it. And expect a nice dose of violence too. Next up at number 5, we have Kimono Zume, a show where people can turn into monsters. Wait, where have I seen that before? Ah, anyways, remember the monsters I was talking about? Wend, our main character's girlfriend, can turn into one of them. But that doesn't stop them from having some fun. They love doing the X thing and the dude ties the girl's hands and feet to the bed so that he can give her a bit of a extra happiness, if you know what I mean. Talk about pure dedication. Kimono Zume differs because much of this couple's personal story occurs during the X scenes. It's 13 episodes long, which is a perfect length for something like this. It did kind of slow down near the end of a couple of the episodes, but it was very engaging most of the time. Man vs. Monster. It's a classic tale told in variations for as long as the human mind has held thought. In a stroke of brilliance, the creator of the show redefines this ancient epic and brings to light the full form of human emotion and psychological development. Oh, and one more thing. Every time the couple does the X thing, it is wild as hell. So, uh, beware. Then up next, we got Shigurui Death Frenzy at number four. Now, <laughs> this one is awesome. Based on the Edo period of Japan, this show depicts the cruelty of society of that time. Women were treated like mere objects with no dignity whatsoever. It was all about honor and pride. Basically, it sticks true to the history. This story follows two warring clans' lives with lies, deceit, and the X element. Now, if you go and watch the first episode unprepared, you're gonna regret it. It contains way too much blood, way too much violence, and this is a very sophisticated anime that can be enjoyed by careful, and patient viewers only. So take notes, take deep breaths, and complete the 12 episodes in a few days. And just one more thing, it has a lot of X scenes. So prepare yourselves. There was that one imaginary scene that I can't forget even now. You, you, you understand once you watch it, so go and do it right away. Then up next, welcoming us at number three, we've got Blade of the Immortal. So let me ask you this. What will you get if you mix number seven and four together? I will answer that for you. It is this anime right here. The main character is a swordsman from the ancient time and he is immortal. But the problem lies in that our dude here killed a total of a hundred innocents. So to repent for his deeds, he decides to kill 1,000 evil men. Now that's what I call proper utilization of talent. And one more thing, our dude got a hot chick as a sidekick. So you could probably guess what happens. A bunch of fan service and X, the infamous X element all of you trash love so much. And I'm right there with you, so... <laughs> Anyways, this is one you cannot miss, so go and watch while you still can. Next, coming up at the runner-up position, we have Basilisk. Now, don't tell me I am the only one who visualizes Harry Potter whenever I hear this title. But anyways, this is another show based in ancient Japan. And I love it. A story of two lovers who are from two different clans. Ah classic Romeo and Juliet. The two leads are forced to fight each other due to the responsibility given by their clans and to simply understand it, visualize Hashirama and Madara. Not as lovers, you thickheads, but as rivals from different clans. Heartless killing, endless dying. That pretty much made up the story of this anime. 
almost every character was just bloodthirsty. All except Romeo and Juliet, basically another story of forbidden love, I suppose. And apart from that, the plot, fight scenes, and especially the X scenes were awesome. So definitely watch for those who are hungry for good anime. And coming into our number one spot today, we have Berserk. No, not the recent one. That one was an abomination. I'm talking about the one from the 90s. But even this one couldn't do properly to the masterpiece of the source material. But in terms of adaptations, this was probably the closest one. And that was enough to bring it to the number one spot. And for those poor souls who haven't heard of this masterpiece, let me put it this way. It starts with Guts, a man who will one day be known as the Black Swordsman, a mercenary characterized by the large, great sword he carries. He accepts jobs that offer the most money, but he never stays with one group for long, until he meets Griffith. And everything changes after that. None of the characters are one-dimensional. Even Guts is not your typical main character who wants to be stronger. He just wants happiness. And Griffith, this dude needs a whole video of for explaining his ideas and plans. And for those of you wondering, yes, it has the X element and, well, frankly, girls being violated. And that's disturbing. Like, honestly, it's, it's disturbing. It's awful. But still, if you're wondering if you should watch it, oh, absolutely. If you don't want to read the manga, that is. If you would ask me, you probably won't be getting an anime adaptation anytime soon. So watch it while there is still time left, or just read the manga. Well, that's the list for today, guys. So if you guys were able to make it this far, please be sure to comment on which shows you have watched before or which shows you are going to be watching. And tell me if I should have added any other anime from the X genre. I will be sure to check it out. If there are too many, who knows, there might be a part two. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button and press on that bell icon to keep yourself notified of all our latest new videos. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Haven't I worked hard? Well, in any case, as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.